If you are building an Airtable, you need to understand what a lookup field is and how to properly use it if you're going to get any value out of the stuff that you're building. In this video, I'm going to break down for you exactly that. What is a lookup field? When do you use it? And how can it help you do more inside of Airtable? If learning about the lookup field is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission here to help you get the full potential out of your no-code tools and we want to help you escape the drudgery of spreadsheets, bring you into the modern age with software. Now, before we get into the video, I want to invite you to follow along with me and I'm going to be using a template that we make readily available if you sign up at our website gapconsulting.io slash templates. When you sign up there, you'll get access to five of the most common Airtable template scenarios that we run into. We've put these templates together for you along with instructional video for each template to help you get out of your spreadsheet madness. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on into my screen. Like I said, follow along with me in the template. And the one I'm using here is the project management workflow template. Now we're going to be taking a look at the lookup field, but first we need to understand what the overall scenario is that we have here. We've got projects and they are connected to tasks and those are connected to people. Now, the reason we're using people here is so that we can actually assign tasks to people and they can track them throughout the process. And, uh, and then of course, tasks are going to kind of be the glue that links to everything. A task is connected to a project, but it's also connected to the person assigned to it. And that's the first important key takeaway, understanding lookup fields, because you have to know what stuff is linked before you can understand what the lookup field will do for you. So now that we understand that tasks links to both projects and people, we can start using a lookup field from there. So here we go, right? The easiest way to see this is to actually look at the linked relationship itself and to open up that record because this is a project that this task is connected to, right? We've got the choose event theme connected to the annual gala event. And this is a project that lives in another table, right? This is an entirely separate record from a different data set altogether. So when we click into here, we can see that actual record itself. And you see this line up at the top of the screen, it's going over to the projects table. And this is indicating to us that we're opening a record here that does not live in the tasks table. Instead, it's in the projects table. And we can also read that right here. This is a project from the projects table. So that's what's coming in, right? And we need to understand that linked relationship before we can talk about using the actual lookup field. Now that we understand that we are in a different record, we can look at the other data that exists here in the project record. For example, we have the total project complete field right here. Now that makes sense. It would live in the project record because we're talking about project percentage of complete. We also have some count uh, fields here so we can see how many total tasks there are for this particular project, how many of those are complete, how many, if any, are off track. And we also see the record ID. Now let's imagine for a moment that we had information in the projects table that we need access to inside of our tasks table. For example, we have the record ID right here. Maybe we want to look this up from the project and we want access to it in the tasks table itself. We're going to do this using a lookup field. Let's go ahead and close this down real quick. First, I'm going to flip over into projects and I'm going to rename that record ID field. I want to be crystal clear about what I'm looking at as I'm looking this data up throughout. So what I'm going to do is rename this to say the uh, project record ID. Every record in Airtable will have its own record ID, but we can pass through layers of information. This is going to be our first example. So I've got my project record ID. And we know that projects are connected to tasks. So now if I want to bring that information in, I can. And so we're going to look this up. This works very similarly to a VLOOKUP inside of Excel. If you're familiar with spreadsheets and you've ever had to do that, those formulas can get a little complicated. You're going to love Airtable. It's way easier to build a lookup field here. So we're going to insert a field and I'm going to call this again, the project record ID. 
This is the information we're looking up. A lot of times when we create a lookup field, we might also want to say in parentheses, and this is just a good way for you to stay organized, this came from the project. So we might want to add that here, just in case it's not in the name already. In this case, it's a little redundant, but often when we're using lookup fields, you'll wanna label them in this way so that you know, hey, uh, this information is originating somewhere else. Now we're gonna use the lookup field type and we are going to first be asked, what connection do you care about to start? In our case, if you remember, tasks is connected to projects and it's also connected to the assigned to table, right? The, the people table. So it's saying, which of those two connections do you want to look through to bring that data in? In our case, we're looking for the project information. Next, we need to tell it what field we are looking up and we can only pick one field per lookup field that we build. Now we can have multiple of these, but each one has to be mapped to a specific field in the project table. And so here is that project record ID. The, this is the field that we just renamed and I can bring it in. And when I save this up and create this field, we're now going to bring in the record ID from the project and see it in the tasks table. But we're not quite done yet. There are three more options that we might want to consider. And number one is to only include linked records that meet specific conditions. So for example, we might say, uh, I only wanna look up information if it's a specific status. And if it's not, then I don't wanna look it up. You can keep it over there. So this is option one. We could toggle this on and apply different status. So we could say like the project status must be complete in order for us to wanna look it up. So let's do that. We'll say project status must be complete. Otherwise, we're not gonna look this information up and we're not gonna get re anything returned here. Now, if we had linked to multiple records, we might opt to sort those records by some sort of order. So we could say, hey, I wanna see it in alphabetical order or I wanna see it uh, in terms of chronological order. So we have that capability to sort the data that comes back to us. Now we can also limit the number of items shown. So we could say, hey, if we're linked to, again, let's say five or six different records, I only wanna see this for one record or maybe three records, only bring back the top few. So these are available options to us as well. These options here are actually a little bit newer. They're relatively recent features from Airtable. And so if you're looking at very old videos or maybe you haven't used Airtable for a few years, these will seem new to you, but they're only gonna make your building life that much easier. So. Let's go ahead and create this field and actually see what it brings in for us for a second. You'll notice that only in the condition where the project is complete am I bringing in the record ID. Now, I have my tasks already grouped by project, so it would make sense that this record ID is identical every single time, and that's because this is the same record that I'm linked to. If we were to remove the uh, conditional lookup that we have here, now we are going to see that each one of these is bringing in all the same record ID for each project. And that's exactly what you would expect here. Now let's do this the other way because we have a linked relationship from project to tasks and it goes two directions, right? Projects to tasks, but tasks to projects. So we can actually look up the status of the different tasks and bring that in as well. Let's do that. So from the project side over here, I can add another field and I'm gonna show you a little hack right now for a quicker way to add lookup fields if you go directly to the linked record itself. Right click on it and right here, the second option down is to add lookup fields. Now if you recall, when we built the first one, the first thing we had to do was establish what is the linked relationship you are working from? Well, here it already knows, so we can skip that step. So watch, all I have to do again, right click on the field itself, add lookup fields, and just like that, it's gonna pop up a menu and say, hey, all right, you're looking at the tasks table. What do you wanna look up from there? This is even easier than building it from scratch the way I showed you the first time. So we're gonna say, hey, we wanna know what the uh, status of the tasks is. Not the project status, but the status of the actual tasks table itself. Let's just go ahead and add this and now see what we get. So here's the field. I'm gonna expand it and actually open this up. I'll go tall here. So you see that because I'm linked to five different tasks, I have five different things coming in order here. So there it is, five different statuses 
one status for each task that we've linked to. And that's true for all of the different projects I'm working with here. Now let's dive back in and see how those different features work. I can sort these records and I choose the field that I want to sort by. So maybe in this case, I want to sort by the actual status field itself. And I want to use the status. Now bear in mind, status is a single select field. So when I say first to last, it's going to basically put these things in order of how complete are they? Let me just show you that. We'll save it here. And you can see that in progress happens before something gets marked off track. And then of course, the very last status is always complete. So they got put in that order. And similarly, we can limit the number of items that come back. We can say, come in with the first or the last X number of items. So I might say the first three, and that's what we're gonna see here. I see in progress, complete, complete. Whereas before we had two more complete task statuses showing up. So this is how you use the lookup field. You bring information in from another table that you've already connected to. Now, the big question is, why do you need this? And sometimes it'll be very obvious. Let's say, for example, there was information that lived in another table that was linked that you needed to see in this table. Well, that is exactly when you would implement the lookup field. You're just going to reach through a layer of data and look it up. It's also important to note that you can pass this data through multiple tables. So remember, we passed the projects to the tasks. So we passed through the uh, project record ID, and this came from the projects. Well, remember that tasks now also links to people. So I can even go into the people table now, and I can do the same thing here, add a lookup field, bring me that project record ID, add the field, and just like that, it's telling us, hey, I'm bringing in the project record ID that came from tasks that originally came from projects. So we've passed it now through multiple layers. It's entirely possible to do this. Now, the important takeaway for you is that many times when you're building automations, that is when this lookup field is really going to come in handy for you. If you had an automation, as an example, that said, hey, when a task gets marked complete, I want to look up who the uh, manager of the project is and send them a Slack message or a message in Microsoft Teams that says, hey, a person in charge of the project, another task has been marked complete. It's going to be a lot easier if you can just look up that information right here in the tasks table. Let's say you looked up to see who is the person in charge of every single project. Well, they could be linked to the project. You could look it up in the task and that's going to make your automations so much simpler and much more straightforward when you're building them. So not only is it helpful to see the information in your database or in your interface and bring it through the multiple layers, but it's also very helpful when you're building automations. Now, one closing thought for you is that the lookup field is going to be very similar to the rollup field. We recently did a video on the rollup field. If you're interested in learning about that, I would suggest checking that video out. But the key difference is that the rollup field allows you to have some sort of aggregation function. You can sum all of the different components. You can take an average of them, whereas the lookup field simply displays them. All it's doing is bringing it through. It's not manipulating that data or altering it in any way. I know we went quickly here in this video, but I hope that you got a ton of value from it. If you have additional questions that we did not cover, feel free to swing by our website. We have a ton of resources there. Of course, if you did get value from this, please consider giving us a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, but most importantly, keep on building.